Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Makoto Nagata, and I'm from Kobe University. Today, I'm uh, talking about the silicon subsidy backside of an ICH for performance improvements and the security protections. I think it's covered a bit wider area, but uh, I, try, I will try to give you some idea what we are doing in our lab. This is the outline. I will give you some introduction and then the silicon backside metals for the power delivery performance and then the silicon backside vulnerability and the protection for the security. And I will draw some con conclusions. So I think uh, nowadays, you know, that in many well, conferences or the journals or magazines, that you always people are talking about how that we can use the silicon backside for the power delivery and even for the interconnect as well. That this is a photo I, I, I just picked up from the IMEC, and they are a very nice photo about the power. Delivery. I think you see that on top we have the CMOS devices, but underneath we have the valid power rail and the nano TSPs and the backside interconnected. This is the uh, whole sketch of what they are doing now. And that are quite well uh, supported by the people like Intel, ARM, Synopsys, and now the, in the DAC or ISSCC or VSI, always they are talking about this. But this is a bit different from our perspective. We are doing our research on the advanced packaging technologies. This is also the silicon backside as the area for the potential uh, well, new structures. Uh, but the difference from the uh, IMIC one and our ones is our uh, the technology is always a kind of the beer last, meaning that your wafer will be coming from the fab, like a TSMC or like a, uh, Intel, uh, any, it, in, anything. But after that, we can apply our techniques to do something on the backside. This is a totally different uh, the image uh, from the uh, IMIC one and our one. This is a kind of a, a bit uh, a sketch of the uh, the chip having the Oh, in this case, that we uh, produce a silicon interporter. Uh, the front side, we have uh, devices like a CMOS, and the back side, we have uh, a thick bellied metal. For, I will show you later on, but anyway, that this is a sketch. We have a CMOS on top and the uh, big bellied, uh, the uh, high, uh, high thickness uh, bellied metal on the back side of the silicon. So uh, this is the uh, first image I would like to show you. That, and why we are doing this, because the, nowadays, the chips are the packaging in the flip chip way. I think you know. The, uh, traditionally, the, all the time, the chips at the face side, the CMOS side is on the front. And uh, the bonding wires will be connecting the peripheral, peripheral pads to the system, uh, the uh, lands, like this. This is the bonding wires. This was the traditional. But nowadays, the most of the chips will be in a flipped down meaning that front side of the CMOS will be uh, directly facing to the uh, interporter. And also, the, we have multiple dies on the interporter. It's, and sometimes we call this as a chiplet types of this, uh, the uh, assembly using the uh, interporter. The interporter is sometimes quite thin, uh, sometimes just membranes, quite uh, thin membranes. Uh, that's the, uh, all the, uh, the access ports on the silicon dies will be connecting to the uh, uh, metals uh, plate uh, or patterned on the membranes with the micro bumps like, like this. And the two different chips will be situated on the single uh, plate. And then we have uh, a practic practice uh, the uh, 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 printed circuit board that have the more bigger solder ball that can be connected to the membranes. We have the, uh, some uh, interconnect layers inside the membranes. Uh, this is the uh, so-called flip chip assembly. And uh, now we are focusing on this type of the packaging. Obviously, from the top view, you see the backside of the chicken chips, meaning that you can use your backside for some reasons. Or you can attack on the, uh, some of the circuits on the front side, even from the backside of the chicken die. This is a topic I would like to talk to you today. So the, uh, we are always uh, thinking about the, what kind of flip chip assembly uh, we have. Uh, for the uh, uh, for some functionality or some vulnerability as well. So uh, this is a one chart uh, we have uh, developed uh, with actual devices and uh, presented at the IEDM uh, some years back. And uh, this is a uh, fully uh, stacked chip, 3D chip stacking. We have the uh, tier one, tier two, tier three, and tier, tier fours all connected to the TSBs. TSB means for uh, stands for the uh, through sync conveyor. And the, the connections from the front side of the device to the back side uh, is done by using the, uh, the kind of the uh, tunnel 
uh, produced in each of the die. I will show you it later on the, on the chip uh, uh, photo. But anyway, the four chips are connected. In addition, each of the tier have the backside. Those can also be applicable for some uh, uh, the potential uh, the uh, devices formed on the backside. So, uh, so here we have a BDD VSS stands for the uh, power domain network, a uh, power delivery network having the high voltage side as a BDD and the ground side as a VSS. Uh, this is the kind of a notation I will uh, use in, in the whole my presentation. So BDD means a high voltage side and VSS means a, a ground side. And uh, if we can use the backside we may have uh, some uh, capacitances that can be useful for the decoupling purposes in the power delivery network. Here, the, our technologies, it's not so, the, as I mentioned as in the first slide, this is a kind of uh, the uh, post wafer assembly techniques, post wafer manufacturing technologies, meaning that we don't have the fine line uh, TSP is like uh, the IMEX, they are called nano TSP, meaning that the uh, TSP has a diameter with smaller than one micron. But in our case, this is the uh, much larger, like a, a TSP diameter of the 10 micron, 100 times larger, but it's easier for us to produce because it's not so fine line. And uh, you can apply this uh, large size TSPs for the, any kind of uh, wafers. If the wafer have their uh, fine line fin fed devices, but the uh, wafer can be processed later on by using our technologies having the larger sizes. Low cost, it's a kind of the assembly technique or post processing uh, advanced packaging technologies. So this is the, uh, and this is the die photo after the uh, cross section uh, and uh, the uh, SEM scanning electron microscopy was used to see the, what the, uh, uh, the structures we could uh, fabricate. The, here is a uh, pad, and uh, we have the TSB with the uh, diameter of the 10 micron, and uh, the dips of the 40 micron in this case, uh, the 20 micron in this case, actually. And uh, the, we also have the uh, 10 micron uh, buried, bit, buried metal. This is the uh, uh, new technologies, and the backside buried metal means that we don't have the, uh, we, we, uh, not just the uh, TSBs. TSB means that uh, the, uh, the through silicon beer. But in addition, we have the uh, horizontal metal layers buried within the silicon substrate. Why we need to make things buried? Because we want to have the thick, high, high thickness, like a 10 micron or even 20 micron, to reduce the uh, parasitic resistance or sometimes we want to have a more larger capacitance in the backside for the power delivery network. Of course, we have the, uh, uh, some uh, uh, the different technology like a backside uh, RDL, the distribution layer. This is a different technology, but the, the thickness is always uh, smaller than five micron, typically. So this is the difference. Why we need to use the buried types of the design? I just want to uh, be buried, make things buried. And then the, the whole the silicon will be thinned down to the uh, like uh, 40 micron in this case. Very thin. That is good for the uh, stacking the dies, like I showed you in the previous chart. Four, four chip stacks, but the total thickness still within the uh, 200 micron. That could be manageable, right? So this is a, a general sketch of the, what we uh, uh, prepared, uh, we developed from the processing point of view. Now that can be applicable for different types of wafers. The advantage, what kind of advantage we could uh, get from the backside buried metal? Uh, for the uh, capacitance sizing in the BBM, we can have the uh, density of something like a, a quarter femtofarad per micron square. This is a bit uh, smaller than the uh, typical front side uh, capacitors like uh, MOM, metal oxide metal capacitors, typically one film to farad per uh, one square micrometer. And MIM, if we have the uh, specific, uh, the insulator between the metal to the metal in between, uh, we have the such layers in, in between. In that case, we may have the two film to farad per square micron. 
Or if uh, uh, people allow us to have their uh, nonlinear capacitor like the gate capacitances, in that case, we have a four times larger in comparison to the MOM. In comparison to them, the BBM has a bit smaller. But the advantage here is that we can use the whole area of the backside. The backside is decoupled from the front end because of the post of wafer processing. You can design the circuit independently from the backside. Then you can add on the backside metals for the having the routing or even the capacitors additionally in addition to the front side capacitors. Obviously, if we use the front side capacitors, you will consume some areas, or you could consume some specific layers, as shown in the overhead line here. We don't have any non we don't have any area overhead if we use the backside as the area for producing or having the additional capacitances. Now, this is a cross section of the actual actual devices. As I mentioned, that we have the four tiers. And uh, each of the tier has a front side device and also back side buried metal. And those are the uh, uh, viewed in the photo like here, uh, one, two, three, four layers and the magnified. We see the front side devices here and the back side buried metal here. Those are connected to the uh, bumps in between the uh, micro bumps, bumps in between the tiers and uh, well connected to each other or sometimes are se separated or depend on your designs. And uh, from the equivalent circuit model point of view, what's the benefit? I think uh, if you're uh, familiar with uh, uh, like uh, the uh, wafer F4 fan out wafer level packaging technologies, if you know, the, uh, the one of the advantage of such F4 wafer level fan out wafer level uh, packaging I mean, uh, sometimes stand, uh, sometimes it's abbreviated as F4 WLP. Uh, the one of the advantage is that they are very thin in the uh, assembly, and the meaning that your the connecting length from your power domain to the backside, uh, the landing is quite small. You can put your capacitors just underneath your circuit. It's a it's a it's a kind of the uh, bulk capac bulk capacitance that can be connected to the circuit just with a very thin very tiny length. This is a benefit. Sometimes we call this kind of capacitance as a land side capacitances. Uh, this is a CLS, capacitance land side. But problem here is that you can put the land side capacitors only in the bottom layers. You can't put them in between tiers. But if we have, if we have a BBM, it's a metal in, in between the tiers. You're, if you have a, you, if you're standing on the CMOS, you, you, you look, see the above, you can see the backside of the next tier. You can use backside for the additional capacitors, meaning that you can insert your CBPM in each of the tiers. You can distribute the BBM. You can distribute the capacitors, connecting to the very small, very short distance to the circuits, and those will be uh, give you the additional uh, decoupling or sometimes well uh, the reducing the voltage variations happening on the uh, uh, circuits. This is a tier photos. Uh, we have uh, front side CMOS. This is a quite uh, a general sketch. I think everywhere you can see, but in, even on the back side, you have another patterns. This is metallizations pattern. And uh, all the uh, metals are buried within the silicon substrate uh, with the thickness of like uh, uh, 10 uh, micron in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the copper. Capacitors measured. The, uh, this is a different types of the designs. Uh, in this case, that uh, we apply some cryptographic engines as the uh, samples, and uh, all, all the measurements are done on the actual devices, and without BBM and with BBM horizontally and vertical axis, will be the capacitance is uh, measured by the uh, by the equipment. And uh, you see that all the time, if we, you have the backside buried metal you have there more than 10% uh, or even larger uh, the, in the total capacitance. The uh, highest capacitance will be coming from the circuit itself, but you can add on the uh, capacitance on the backside additionally given. And that will be uh, resulting in the, uh, the uh, reduction of the power noise because of the uh, uh, 
high density capacitance backside on your part of the network, and that can be uh, well, quite uh, efficient to decouple the uh, BDD uh, variations and the ground variations that will be removed or suppressed. And uh, the, uh, in the case in the left hand side is conventional and with a single, single backside barrier metal, but in the right hand side, if we have a four tiers, a four chip stacks, all the capacitance were tied up in the, uh, in, in the stack. And finally, the uh, voltage variations will be quite uh, uh, suppressed. Uh, not just the uh, uh, low frequency drops, droops, but also for the high frequency, uh, the, uh, it, it, it's a kind of the clock signal uh, related, the uh, peak voltages, those are also the removed uh, for the uh, BDD side. Ground side, everything is well stabilized in the, in the chip stacks because in this case, uh, we are using a P-type silicon substrate, meaning that all the uh, silicon substrate are uh, the uh, well, biased at the zero volts. So everything will be well uh, stabilized in the ground side. We don't need the uh, backside body metal for the v VSS, but for the VDD we need. Because VDD side, normally the circuits are supplied on die by using the uh, on chip uh, the uh, DC DC converters or, uh, or, or voltage regulators that have the, uh, the uh, finite output impedance that will create the voltage variations actually, but that will be uh, well decoupled by using the, uh, local, the local capacitors uh, the created on the backside of a sequence substrate. This is a chart showing you that when the circuits are operating from 10 megahertz to 30 megahertz, a bit low frequency because of the, this is a huge circuit, so it's, and uh, the front, front line CMOS was uh, uh, used, uh, was uh, the, uh, uh, tech, using the technology of the 130 nanometers. It's not so the uh, high frequency device. So the uh, fre maximum frequency was 30 megahertz. But the, as the frequency increases, the voltage variation will be happening. And the, the, finally, the peak to peak voltage variation is reduced down to the minus 60.4% in the case of uh, 30 megahertz. But the reduction ratio is more larger for the, high, uh, for the low frequency area. For the, dynamic noise. But for the DC drop, also reduced because the, uh, the whole PDN has a low impedance because of the high thickness of the backside metal. So those are obviously give you some ideas of the uh, advantage or benefits of using the silicon backside for the uh, uh, power by network. Even with the uh, bigger uh, the TSBs for the uh, 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 in comparison to the fine, fine, line, fine line device technologies on the front side. Okay, so this is the one of the, uh, uh, the idea I showed you about the usage model of the silicon substrate backside. But another theme, theme here is that we, meet, we, we need to know about what's the vulnerability coming from the silicon backside because the other chips are now flipped down. Flip face, uh, the CMO circuits are uh, facing to the, to the uh, laminate or this or the interporter in this case. The, if you see the chip in assembly, you can see the backside. So you don't see any patterns in a normal regular chip. But the, uh, you can apply the electromagnetic wave, EM wave, or you can apply the, uh, the infrared laser from the backside easily, and so it will be coming down to the silicon front side circuit, and then they interact with the circuit operations and create some uh, difference in the circuit operation. This is a basic idea of the uh, attack, uh, kind of the active attacks in the, uh, in the case of the cryptographic engines if you have on the CMOS front side circuitry. And uh, we have the different types of the assembly structures or different types of the attack media. But the message from this chart is simply, I would say that the backside is quite open for any types of the uh, uh, malicious or kind of the attempts uh, by uh, the people who wants to uh, extract some information uh, from the dynamic uh, failure or dynamic uh, the noise happening from the circuit. So, what kind of uh, examples we have? Before going to the examples, this is a kind of the uh, well, sketch of the IC chip well, structures. You may have the cryptographic engine in the center, and you may have a data interface in between the external world to the cryptographic processor. Or even on the big silicon on chip, 
the, the, the external world, meaning that your uh, application processor would be situated on the same die, but you may have the data interface to the, uh, protect the specific data from the outside. To, uh, in that case, the data interface will give you the kind of a security zone. And that, in that case, the cryptographic processor will be uh, running only for the data coming from the specific data interface. And this is a, a digital design architectural sketch. And for the analog design architectural sketch that in this case we may have the power management control circuitry uh, that we've supplied the cryptographic processor on the, on the die. And also we have a, a phase locked loop to give you the stable clock uh, given to the cryptographic processors. Why we need them? Because the PMC will decouple the uh, cryptographic processor from the outside world from, uh, in terms of the power delivery network. And also the PLL will be decoupled the uh, clocking signal coming to the uh, cryptographic processor from the outside. Sometimes people want to introduce some glitches into the uh, uh, clock domain, but that will be uh, canceled by the PLL, basically. So those are kind of the analog barrier for the cryptographic processor. However, however, in any case, the vertically, the EM can coming down or the EM could be radiated from the circuit. So the, we can't eliminate EM or lasers from this uh, uh, horizontal architectural sketches. So this is the reason why that we are trying to have the, such the assembly techniques for the, even for the security domains. Uh, this is the, uh, again, the horizontal sketch of the equivalent circuit model. The uh, uh, digital circuits or cryptographic circuits will be supplied by the on-chip power management control, as I mentioned. And those, uh, but in, in any case, the cryptographic circuits has a VSS uh, ground site connecting to the P-type sequence substrate. At the same time, power management control units also have the, uh, the connection for the VSS to the uh, uh, sequence substrate. So sequence substrate is no longer decoupled. Every signal, every power will be going down to the system ground all through the P-type silicon substrate, meaning that silicon substrate is a kind of the uh, uh, source of uh, leakage or source of the vulnerability. If that people can come to the uh, backside of a silicon to measure the voltage, that will give you some idea of the, what kind of the uh, uh, power management or what kind of the power consumption will be happening in the cryptographic circuits. So this is the once again that the backside is a problem. So here, actual attacks happening on the flipped chips. Quite simply, that you can add your probing needle to the backside of a sequence, sequence die, and you can extract the voltage variations happening on the sequence substrate. This is the quite easy sketch, and you can also have the waveforms uh, coming uh, from the backside. Well, in this case, uh, this is not a uh, measurement result from the backside, but this is a measurement result uh, by using an on-chip monitor to see uh, voltage variations happening on the VSS side. VSS side is once again, this is a connected to the sequence, sequence substrate. So meaning that the, uh, our measurement from the backside can directly see the exactly same uh, voltage uh, variations happening on the VSS. Different we see in the size of the drop. Always the BDD noise is larger than the VSS noise. Once again, the BDD noise needs to be decoupled by using the uh, capacitors in the, in the circuit or in the backside of the silicon, but the core VSS, this cannot be eliminated anymore. But uh, still we see some voltage variations that can be the source of voltage, a source of leakage, and that need to be covered well by the uh, different types of assembly techniques. And also, the backside is vulnerable to the incoming EM radiations, irradiation, sorry. So in this case, the chip had the, uh, for instance, three millimeters times four millimeters, and your coil may have the diameters of uh, a smaller one is one millimeter or bigger one is four millimeter. And that can be scanned as shown on the chart and uh, creating some uh, the interactions between the EM electromagnetic waves with the circuit underneath or even some part apart from the coil. Because the, uh, your, the uh, magnetic well, wave or your, your, your magnetic interactions was happening not just underneath the coil but also the uh, 
uh, lines, metal lines, apart from the coil because of the magnetic coupling. So the chart on the right gives you uh, measurement results showing, in this case, the uh, colors showed you the number of the uh, unwanted bit trips happening. So in this area, larger bit trips is happening if you have the coil rotate, coil, if you have the coil rotated in this area. But even the area apart from uh, this uh, uh, digital circuits, like uh, the like the position on the left top, obviously the circuits are distant uh, in the more than a few millimeters, distant from uh, the coil and uh, the, uh, from the uh, uh, AS core or, or, or target circuit. We still see some uh, bit trips, unwanted bit trips. So no, no localization we could see from the EM types of the uh, injections because of the spatial kind of couplings and uh, not just the chip, but also the connections to the wires or bonding, uh, or, sorry, or the bumps on the, uh, uh, the interporter. So the backside is always uh, creating some problems on the uh, uh, chip, on the front side. And also the, we have another uh, technique, so-called ESD pulsing. This is the high voltage pulsing directory injected on the backside of the signal. In this case, that HVPI stands for the high voltage pulse injector and with the size of as high as one kilovolt. That can be directly injected on the backside, uh, just from this uh, well, tiny needle. That, in this case, you can scan the needle in all the area in the backside of the silicon substrate. And then you can measure, you can extract some information from the internal circuits and what kind of uh, flip or unwanted bit trips happening even after the injection by the high voltage at the pin location on the backside. This is the observed bit results. In the left hand side, specific point, if you put the needle tip at the specific point, the all the bits flipped to one. This is something wrong with the, uh, I don't know what's the reason, but that happens. But if you scan, the needles from left hand side to the right hand side, you see that the bit trips are happening underneath the location of the tip, in the left middle, in the right. So we see the clear local localization or clear depend position dependency. If we apply the uh, high voltage uh, injection by using ESD tips, this is a different from the EM coil, as I showed you in the previous chart. So we see some physical difference in the, in the case of the uh, injection methodologies. And uh, the bottom chart showed you the kind of uh, uh, the logical structure of this chip. Uh, horizontal axis give you the word, address, and the vertical axis give you the word. So this is the, uh, in this case, the right-hand side. Uh, the p trips happening, but this is in a logical sketch. It's a, it's a code in this uh, a 1 to 10 address and 1 to 16 words. So the clear, uh, well, int uh, clear relationship between the position of the bit trips undesired and with uh, uh, bits uh, connect, uh, the bits uh, belonging to the specific, uh, the uh, uh, Riker uh, register of the circuits. So, it, if we can have this kind of the uh, uh, maps, you can uh, the or the you can try to make the undesired flips at the location of the, your uh, the uh, address or your flip uh, your register of interest. Sometimes those interest uh, those uh, the register can be in the uh, design of the cryptographic engines. But you can make some uh, maps by just by making the measurements. So this is a. Uh, the way of using a backside uh, uh, attacks or a backside injection, uh, high voltage injections uh, to see the, where the registers are and what kind of address words that registers have. Those kind of information can be ex extracted by this kind of the pinpoint injections. Now, so how we can uh, protect those kind of uh, different types of uh, uh, the attacks? Simply, if you have the uh, backside metal. That can be the good way of shielding 
the, your device or protecting your circuit from the backside attacks. The, in the case of uh, the infrared laser irradiations or in the case of direct probing or in the case of uh, the uh, ESD pulsing, those can be shielded by using the backside metal. But from the uh, process point of view, you need to have some patterns. You can't plate all the area by the single plate. This is the point. So we need to have some patterns. But the patterns can be useful because in some case, you may have the backside of the metal for the, uh, the uh, uh, as I mentioned, as a part of the part derivative network. In that case, you need to have the BDD and the basis lines, meaning that, meaning that you need to have some patterns. And those patterns can be useful because sometimes you can uh, hide your registers just under the backside by the middle. In that case, that if, you, if, if someone wants to make some uh, uh, undesired bit flips by scanning the, uh, the uh, high voltage pulsing, as I showed you, but that can be uh, pro protected. Uh, those kind of important registers can be protected by the backside body metal. In this case, that the front side design and backside design needs to be aligned in the physical uh, layered viewpoints. And also the uh, laser can also be blocked by the backside body metal. But sometimes the laser can be coming to the front side if you have the patterns like this, you have uh, some, uh, some uh, holes in between the backside patterns. How we can manage this? One of the uh, key points here is that if, you, if we have patterns, sometimes people want to uh, the break the backside metals by using the uh, high power lasers. That can be cut, that can cut the uh, backside metal. But the uh, backside metal can be connected to the front side circuitry and with a very simple detector like this, if some, someone cut here, the current will be stopped and then the node A will be going up and uh, the register will, uh, will, will sense the, uh, something wrong with the uh, backside body metal. This is the backside attack detectors. Quite simple but quite helpful because simply that people will try to cut that can be detected by the front side, front side circuit. Once again, in this case, the, uh, you need to have some patterns. If you have a plate, if some, someone uh, creates a hole, that cannot be detected. But you have a meander, in this case, that someone can uh, detect. Uh, if someone cuts, that the detector can detect the, uh, what kind of a cut happening. Once again, the uh, backside is useful for the part derivative network meaning that you will have some patterns, so the patterns can be useful for the detections. This is the one idea, and uh, also if you have the backside uh, uh, metal, the voltage variations directly observed on the backside, as shown on the top chart, will be suppressed or totally eliminated because of the backside buried metal. You cannot see any voltage variations directly from the backside, so now you can hide your voltage uh, variations happening on the front side. And also the razor can also be uh, suppressed or cut or, 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 uh, or the uh, laser irradiation can be uh, well the stopped by the backside by the metal on the top side case. But if that razor is coming to the, uh, the, the space between the backside by the metal, unfortunately we see that some, some voltage variations are happening. But once again, that your, your design can be co-designed well, co uh, between the front side and the back side, and your, your, your flip prop can be hidden, your flip props can be hidden uh, in the back side by the metal in the case of the top case. The, if the laser is radiated on the BBM, that cannot be input, in, in the, go into the, in, into the uh, sequence substrate, and then that will not reach the uh, uh, flip props of the, your, you want to protect. Okay, so this is the, uh, some several sketches we are so far doing about the, how we can use the silicon substrate backside. So the, uh, 
as I mentioned, that the silicon subsurface backside still it's it's quite open space for the uh, many different kind of structures or many many well useful uh, usage models. And uh, sometimes that can be used can be used for the boosting the performance and uh, also exploring some uh, new functionality and also helpful for the heterogeneous integrations. And uh, advanced packaging always tries to get some good performance, but uh, at the same time, potentially they may give you uh, vulnerability from the security point of view. So the design needs to be trade-off in the good way. So deployment of such techniques will be happened for the 3D chip stacks and also for the chiplets 2.5D uh, integrations, but uh, in the scientific viewpoints, we need to have some ways of measuring trade-offs in the design or and also assessing the system performance and the post wave low-cost processing manufacturing technologies, those ideas will be coming up in the, in the coming uh, uh, years. Thank you very much for your uh, listening.